we've had a lot of conversations about in audio equipment, mm -hmm. uh, which we both share a great love of, that everything makes a difference. And I'd like it if you could explain to me some of the ways that that uh, relates to the bow. The thing is with bows that it consists of, well, the nut where you tighten and loosen the mm. bow hair, the frog, then the hair which comes out and ends into the, into the tip. And this is horse hair. So it's very natural material. I have developed a fetish for, for over the last years. I just can't stop looking at bows. I can't stop trying bows. But now I have a piece of art here in my hands, which I love playing. Well, the instrument that I've, uh, I've got on tour with me now is uh, made by Tommaso Balestreri. And that was an instrument which was used by my teacher, Ruggiero Ricci. When Ruggiero lent me his bow, which I fell in love with, it was fantastic. However, he wasn't going to sell it because he was still on the, on the concert platform himself. So I asked him whether I can have a copy made. And so I went to Thomas Gebert, who was in Vienna, who is a perfectionist into the smallest detail you can imagine. Yeah. So I think if you the have only a way to be. with him, you would really sort of have a good time with him. So he had his own patent on how to measure out the, you know, the, the stiffness of the bow and the, everything that you need to know to be able to make a plain copy. And weeks after, just in time before my audition for the orchestra, that copy was finished. And I took the copy and it didn't work. It just didn't work. And Thomas said, don't worry. The original bow has a, has a cone, you know, like when you look at the bow from the frog to the tip, it is one point where there is a bent, bent corner in it. The copy itself is made exactly the same way as the original, except for that one bend, which was supposed to be a mistake because he just didn't believe that this can cause it. You know, it must be something else. But the bow, everything else we've worked on was identical except for that one bend. So we said, okay, we have to put this in. This is, this is the answer, you know. So he actually did make a copy with a mistake in it. And that mistake is, that mistake actually gives the bow the handling as well as the sound that the original had. And even Ruggiero, who I played it to, he said, it's fantastic. He played it and he said, which one do I play now? And he looked and, of course, he could tell, you know, because of certain things, you just feel it in your hand, you know. But that was something which was an amazing experience. And that bow, still, I still have it here on tour with me. And that, that was the bow I played the audition with and won the audition with. So that's never going to leave my violin case. <laughs>